And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, for, for our, our neighbors and friends who are sick, I want you to lift up in your hearts those people you've been praying for. We pray for Mrs. Taylor, Lord, that you would touch her and heal her. Mr. Victor, keep healing him. Father, we thank you, Father, for Miss Mary and for, for Mr. McGuffey. And we pray, Father, for Miss Lenora. We pray for dear and her brother. We pray, Father. Oh, God, y'all lift up people. We pray, Father, for Miss Bourgeois, for Brother Daniel. We pray. Y'all know people who are sick. We pray for Janelle. If I didn't pray for somebody, you know I pray for every single person I see in this church every day, not sometimes. And I pray that you, Lord, will touch each one of them. And God bless this service. And we pray for the revival that you're beginning in our hearts, a revival that will touch the nations of the world. Oh, God, we pray for Barry, Lord. We pray for him, too, and touch him. And we pray, Father, for this great revival, oh, God, that you're bringing right here in our hearts. I will touch the nations of the world. Let no man be exalted, Lord God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. And happy anniversary to, to Perry and Joyce. If I, if I tell Perry to stand here, he'll stand here. <laughs> you know, God is a good God. Y'all give me a little bit of time today. You know, I said that, like I always said, that the message is goodness of color. So if you turn with me and Nehemiah. <laughs> And I want you to just bear with me. We're going to have communion. Remember, get your heart ready. You don't have to go to our church to take communion with us. Just believe what we believe. And that's in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to just give you a prelude of this. There's an attribute of God that I love to preach about and do it often. It's about His goodness. Sometimes we're used to authoritative figures being not so nice, not so good. Uh, not people you trust. But you know, the God we serve is a good God. And his goodness is part of who he is. It's not something he just does. He is good. God is good in everything he does. I know many of us are going through things today. I want you to know it's going to work out for your good if you trust God. Because God is always good. If God is in your life, he's working out something good. Yes, yes. He's always working out something good. Why do we have to go the long way sometimes? Think about Israel. I mean, they have to go the long way for God to work out something good. He wanted them to go into Canaan, a land that was flowing with milk and honey. But what did the Lord have to do? He brought them all the way around the Sinai. They spent 40 years in the desert. But God was still good. That land was still there. Yep. God was working it out with them. First, God had to work something in them before he can give them something that he had provided for them. They didn't dig not one, 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 one furrow of land to have that land of milk, of milk and honey. They didn't have to work it. Their enemies worked it for them. They moved into the land and took it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God had prepared it for them for them from the beginning because he was good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the people weren't ready to receive his goodness. So sometimes they had to go through a little bit of teaching, had to learn more about him to understand who he is and understand that purpose. See what was happening to Israel, they had been in Egypt for 400 years. They didn't understand that God had a purpose for them as a nation. He didn't just call them out so he could give them things. He called them out for a purpose. Yes, he called you out for a purpose. Yes, and it's that purpose that works out the good things God has for you. The Bible says in Romans 8, don't have to turn to these scriptures, I have to move fast for communion today. Romans 8, 28 say, For all things work for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's it. That's it. Yes, the Lord is good. Yeah, sure. Nehemiah was in captivity. And Israel was in captivity because they sinned and they were alone and they were out there in a place that was pagan, worshiping. Uh, they had other gods over them, but that was okay. They kept the name of the Lord with them. Yes. And Nehemiah was sent as a cupbearer to go back and rebuild the walls. And I love Nehemiah, so I've been in there a lot lately. But I want you to know when he got there, he knew the goodness of God. 
And in chapter 9 of Nehemiah, y'all with me? Mm -hmm. I'm moving fast because of communion, but you know, I slow up and the Holy Ghost slows me up, though. When they came back to this land that they had disobeyed God, and they went into captivity, but now they come back. And Nehemiah wants to tell the story about even though you've been in captivity, let me tell you, it's not God's fault. You stop obeying God. The reason why you're in an enemy's camp, because you stop obeying God. He told you it's going to make the, your enemy your footstool, yes. but guess what? You stop obeying God. Mm -hmm. In Malachi, he said, well, well God, how have I stopped obeying? Well, you, you don't bring your tithes to the storehouse. Now, you know me, I'm not in the tithes. You give what God tells you to give. But sometimes God has given us, some of us have a heart that we should obey God if he tells you to do that. There's no circumstances where you break the rules of God. If he gave it to you personally, he told you to do something, do it. I don't want you to miss disobedience up with sin, even though disobedience can be sin. But sometimes we disobey in the direct order God gave. Now that is just outright disobedience. You know, I'm afraid to do that. That's, you should have the fear of the Lord. Don't ever disobey whatever God has spoken to you. God tell you to go here, do something for this child, do something for your community, and you say, no, I don't feel like doing it today. That's disobedience. That's the kind of disobedience I'm talking about. When Israel stopped obeying God, they were always in sin. They weren't they? They kept doing that. But when you get an order from God, you do it. Remember Saul? God told him to kill everybody, all of those Amalekites, or whoever they were, and he wouldn't kill them all. Matter of fact, he kept the king alive. And he lost his whole kingship just for disobeying God. He killed every, almost all of them. He kept some of the sheep. He kept the king. God said, you should have killed him. Like I told you, you understand how strict it is to obey God? I understand the leadership class is talking about uh, how, how we love God. We love God by obeying God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you love him. You don't love him like you love somebody in your house. You love him like a God that you would serve. He expects you to obey him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, people. The quickest way to have God move in your life with his goodness is for you to start obeying him. If you start obeying him. Nehemiah told this about the people of Israel in a long soliloquy, but we just want to read part of it, verse 19 of Nehemiah 9. Because of your great compassion, speaking of who? God. You did not abandon them in the desert. By day, the pillar of cloud did not cease to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way. Y'all see where I am? Yes. They were to, to take on the way they should, were to take. You... <clears throat> I'm sorry. You gave your good spirit to instruct them as the Holy Spirit. You did not thank them. On. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and you gave them water for their thirst. For 40 years you sustained them in the desert. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet become swollen. You gave them kingdoms and nations, allotted to them even the remotest frontiers. They took over the country of Sihon and king of Heshbon and the country of Og, king of Bashan. You made their sons as numerous as the stars in the sky, and you brought them into the land that you told their fathers to enter and possess. Their sons went in and took possession of the land. You subdued before them the Canaanites who lived in the land. You handed the Canaanites over to them along with their kings and the people of the land to deal with them as they please. They captured fortified cities and fertile land. They took possession of houses filled with all kinds of good things, wells already dug, vineyards, olive groves, and fruit trees in abundance. They are to the full, and they, they are, I'm sorry, they ate to the full and were well nourished. They reveled in your great goodness. This God would, you, if you're in God's purposes, God got your enemies working for you right now. God got your enemies working for you right now. Yes, yes. If you just stay in his obedience and stay in his will. Let me tell you something. Your enemies are working for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And indeed, not one well. 
They didn't, they didn't build not one house, but they moved into it because of the goodness of God. The enemies did it for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It is a principle of the scriptures that God will always provide for his people. Yes. Even before, uh, 18 years ago, before I even came down here, somebody told me, say, if God called you to go down at a reserve, then he's going to provide a church for you. And if after two years you don't have one, you shouldn't have went down there. Because God will provide if God sent you. But we've been here almost 18 years. 17 years. 18 almost, huh? And the church is built and established. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something. When you do what he says, you're going to pay a price. Because the world don't let you just have anything easy, does it? But if you stay the course, fight the good fight. Yes. The goodness of God is set up for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, they went 40 years. 40 years in the desert fighting the Malachites, fighting, uh, not even knowing if they were going to eat, but God provided for them, rained down manna, sent food for them to eat, provided all their needs. The shoes didn't even wear out 40 years. You got a pair of shoes like that? <laughs> 40 years. He took care of them. But his plan was to bring them into the promised land. But guess what? They weren't ready for the promised land. Sometimes we go through things because God's making you ready for what he's preparing for you. I can tell you right now, if I started a church when I was 30, trying to build a family, I would have failed by now. God makes us ready for what he's doing. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And yet maybe some of your struggles, you're wondering why you're going through this, going through that. Hey, look, he's making ready the promise. Yes. Yes. Don't worry. Your enemies are even working for you to get there. Mm -hmm. That's the strangest thing about the children of God. They don't have to worry about his goodness. He's going ahead of them to prepare the way for them. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I know for a fact I'm going through trials right now, me and my family, but I can tell you right now, we're just waiting for what God's going to do. Because yes. he has never failed us. Yes. And he will never fail you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The goodness of God is always with us. We always say that from, from uh, Psalm 23. Surely, goodness, mercy yes. will follow me yes. all. Hallelujah. God's goodness cannot be mistaken for anything that's accidental or maybe or some timing. It's who he is. When Moses was on the mountain, he told Moses, now I, 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 I will show you my goodness. Remember? I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. Yes, yes. I mean, he said that about himself. It's my goodness passing you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You don't serve a God who doesn't see your trouble. He sees those Amalekites. He sees those enemies. They're working for you. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you something. I, I got plenty of testimony in this church and mine to show you how much your enemies work. The things that look bad for you, don't you worry. Yes. Come on, At the sir. end of this thing, His goodness yes, will yes. be not every time. Hallelujah. That's the God you serve. Yes. When the scripture says, Psalm 109, 21 says, Out of the goodness of your love, deliver me. Yes. That's yes. what prayer you yes, are Lord. praying. Out of the goodness of your love, yes, Lord. deliver me. Yes, Lord. Don't sit there and think, Oh, God don't love me. I'm going through too much. No, you said, No, it's not His nature. The Bible says he's always loved. He yes. is love. Yes. Yes. Don't ever say my condition is because God has forsaken me. He don't love me. No, God loves you. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God can't help but love you. Yes. And God is even prepared for your sins. You can't even say your sins hold you back from God. No, God will wash all your sins away. Yes. He sent yes. you to full mercy in the body of his own son. Yes. Yes. You don't even have to make a sacrifice. It's his blood that's yes. washed you. Amen. How good can a God get that he sent his only begotten son yes. to save your soul? Yes. How much more will he do for you? Yes. You know, you had to have 
God do something good to understand my excitement. Yes. I understand how good God is. Yes. I don't understand why I go through things. I'm gar I guarantee you, Israel coming through that desert, running, well, who we come out here for, Moses? <laughs> Following you. Ain't no food out here. Ain't no housing out here. We got to live in tents. We were better off in Egypt. Because they didn't understand. Let me tell you, God don't have to rush for anything. He had it set up. The Canaanites were still fixing the soil for them, building houses for them. They had no idea. They weren't going to live in those houses in 40 years. They were preparing it for the children of Israel. God was going to have them overcome all the nations in Canaan. Every last one of them. They were working for Israel. You don't know what God has ahead for you. But I can tell you one thing. That enemy that's so big in your face, he's working for you. Yes, yes. He's working for me. Hallelujah. Yes. I had an ambitious young man who was once on my staff, but when certain things happened in that company I was in, he decided to tell me, I won't get your job. I want your position. And I'm going to get it. And I had no doubt in my mind, as hard as I worked, that he will get it. Maybe it was because of his persuasion, but maybe it's because I felt like God was telling me, move on. I don't know. Hallelujah. But I stuck it out. <laughs> I lived through it. Yes, sir. And the shame of being thrown out, there was no shame at all. After 19 years. But the Lord gave me and my wife all night to put scriptures all over my kitchen and all over the place. Yes, sir. And we knew that his goodness was driving right ahead of me. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. All I had to do was stay the course and endure. Yes. yes. That's all I had to do. Hallelujah. Because his goodness is right there. Come on, Thank sir. you, yes. Jesus. Thank you. Sometimes I felt like I could touch him. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's always like that. He's always like that. Yes. Hallelujah. People, I want to encourage you today that whatever we all, and I know all of you, going through something. But I got some good news for you. The goodness of God is preparing a way for you. Before we get ready to pray. But I want you to know, he has blessed you, and he's watching over you. Deuteronomy yes. 2, 7. He's blessed you, and he's watching over you. Hey, look, I want you to know something else. He will have men give unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Yes. He will have men give unto you. That's Luke 6, 38. He said he goes before you. Isaiah talks about that in Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, and Isaiah 52, 12. Listen, he says, I make a way for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 1, 32 to 33. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He can make a way out. When you're tempted to go do something, you ain't got no business. He'll make a way. Yes. 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 And he says, in Romans 8, we just talked about verse 28. All things work for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. And then I want you to know in Hebrews chapter 1, 13, 10, 13, and so forth. In, he'll make your enemy your footstool. Yes. You know what a footstool is? You ever try to get something out of the cabinet and you need a little footstool? He'll make your enemy take you high. Yes. yes. Thank oh, you, Jesus. Jesus. People. Hallelujah. This is true. Yes. Yes. He'll make your enemy take you high. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Because there's all this goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He'll get your enemy to take you high. Thank you, Jesus. Do, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, they say the Lord will bless you. Yes. But whatever you give to men, he'll bless you for it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, let me tell you something. His goodness is always there for me and you. Yes. He's always there for you. His surely his goodness will follow us oh, all yes. the days yes. of our lives. Hallelujah. 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 Today, I just want you to celebrate the goodness of God when you take communion today. You just say in your heart, his goodness. <coughs> It's who he is. Yes. 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 Yep. I'm not worried about what I've got now. His provision is part of his goodness. Yes. Yes. Listen, 
I don't want provision for the sake of provision. Provision is who God is. His yes. goodness is his provision. Yes. Yes. You don't have to say, I wonder if God wants me to have faith. You know, he's a good God. His yep. goodness. Yep. He wants you to have all things that are good for you to do what he called you to do. Yes. Yes. He's always good. Yep. He said, I wonder if I should have this. I wonder if I should, should, you know, God said, is it good for you? Is it good for you? Yes. You know, everything in this world ain't good for us. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But if it's good, God's going to give it to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is full of goodness. Yes. His goodness passes in front of Moses. Is it passing in front of you today? Do you see it? Yes. Can you feel it? Is your trial that is so that you can see his goodness? Today I want you to live and breathe and feel his goodness. I want you to just worry that those enemies are just, how many you got? You got a lot of them? I mean, what's the news that? You might have a whole staff way to heaven. Hallelujah. You know, I'm talking through experienced people. I'm not just talking noise. I'm talking experience. God is not a respecter of persons. He didn't do it for me and won't do it for you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's good. It's his goodness. You need to be looking for it. And say, pass it from me, Lord. Pass it from me. Hallelujah. Oh, let your goodness pass in front of me, Lord. I'm having trouble with that. Can barely pay my bills today. My company on the books look like it should have been sunk years ago. But your goodness yes. has kept me going. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're preparing for me. Yes. But I know you're preparing a table in the presence of my enemies. Yes. And I know it's a good table, Lord God, because you're going to show forth your glory in your children's lives. Yes. So even the enemy is going to say, that God yes. Yes. is their God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, what better glory can you bring to God than in the face of your very enemy, they see the Lord deliver you? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Today, I want you to say it's a setup for the glory of God. Yes. yes. I don't care what you're going through. Yes. You know, this ain't no prosperity ministry. Uh -uh. I don't preach that. But we have a prosperity call. Yes. I don't have to preach prosperity. He is prosperity. Yes. If I just preach Jesus, I'm preaching prosperity. Yes. That's all you got to do. Preach Jesus. I don't need to preach money. I can preach Jesus and he'll prosper me. Because he's a good God. Say God is a good God. His goodness is going before me. I'm not worried about anything. I lift up my eyes to the hill. Yes. Oh, let's come to my help. Yes. 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 Say, God, God is goodness. It's goodness. It's always goodness. Always. I might be bad, but God is always good. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't change him by what you do. He's a saint. Come on, sir. Yes. All the time. All the time. Because you messed up, don't mean his goodness is not there for you. It's still there. Yes. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I just want you to receive that before you take me. The bread of life. God is the bread of life. He said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Yes. He can't contradict it himself. Yes. I got plenty of scriptures, but today is a day of communion. I just want you to know. And I just want you to believe to the bottom of your heart. God's goodness is there. Yes. Please do that for me. Don't let nobody tell you that he is not there for you. Every need he will supply from yes. his riches. Yes. You just need to let it go. You let God be God. And he say he's working it out. Yes. Yes.
if it takes 40 years, and I look at him and say, oh, man, I ain't got 40 years, but <laughs> if it takes 40 years, <laughs> it's a sub. That's all it is. Ain't no Canaanites when I get there. And if they are, I'm on the show. Hallelujah. Can you bow your heads while we're getting ready to sing? And you're going to get ready for communion. Hey, look. I could preach all day on this. But if you just leave here and say, well, pastor say God. He's a good God all the time. His goodness is going before me. I got much more left for him to give me. Because his goodness is ahead of me. I'm just going to obey him and serve him. No matter what. Today, bow your heads for me and say, God, your goodness goes before me like a cloud by day and like a fire by night. Your goodness is right before me. You make my enemy my footstool. Hallelujah. Let your goodness pass in front of me today. I just want to feel your presence. And I just want to worship you. I just want to worship you. I might have a little drop, but I know your goodness is right around me. But your goodness and your mercy will follow me all the days. All the days. Today I just want you to worship me. Just tell him how good he will not slumber nor sleep. Tell him how good he is.
do love you. We take it all together when we get everybody to get together, okay? Lord, I pray your face will shine upon all of us here. 
Let your healing grace come upon us, Lord, and provide every need from your riches and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, he's a good God.